So today we're talking about C and C++ and really how different they are. Welcome back everybody, I hope you're doing well. Most of my videos on this channel focus on C, but occasionally I talk about C++ a little bit and I write some code in C++ or use C++ in the title, and occasionally people kind of lose their minds. And the most triggering thing seems to be when I write C slash C++ like this. And when I do, I tend to get comments like this. So today I just wanted to wade into this topic a little bit, and I might ruffle a few feathers, maybe my opinion isn't your opinion, but hopefully I can provide some clarity to those of you that are new to this or who are wondering what all the fuss is about. Because I could see this causing a little bit of confusion to people who are new to programming and who are trying to understand what C and what C++ is and why don't they seem to get along. So let's start at the beginning and talk a little bit about a simplified history of the world. In the beginning, Ada Lovelace invented the first... Uh, no. That's too far back. A bit after the beginning, Dennis Ritchie invented C. And C was without type safety and objects. And yes, objects existed, but just barely. They had just been developed in Smalltalk, which was the mother of all object-oriented languages. And Smalltalk came out about the same time as C. And programmers saw that it was good, or at least better than basic Pascal, Fortran, and COBOL. Then, Bjarne Straustrup said, it is not good that C should not have classes and objects. And so he created C++. And Bjarne Straustrup, the creator of C++, describes C++ as a better C. And some have debated the better part, and I'm not gonna dive into that in this video, but let's just say that C++ is C with some additional language features like data abstraction, object-oriented programming, and generic types. And of course, this is an oversimplification and not exactly 100% precise, but the point that I wanna make is that in the beginning, Dennis Ritchie and Bjarne Straustrup were not rivals, they were friends, and Bjarne was simply trying to build off of Dennis Ritchie's work. And for a long time, people have have used the term C slash C++ to describe situations where the distinction between C and C++ didn't really matter. That is when we're talking about things that are pretty common among the two languages. But then something interesting happened between 1998 and 2021, and a lot of C++ developers have started getting a little touchy when you start to talk about them in this way, when you start to talk about them like they belong together. So what's going on? Well, yes, both languages have evolved a bit. C++ has added a bunch of new features. Some of them I like, some of them I don't like, but that's a topic for for another day. Stay on topic, Jacob. But today, most C code will still compile with a C++ compiler with little or no change to the code. C is still almost a subset of C++ but not quite. And now just to be clear, if anyone involved in standardization or the standards community is listening, I am a big fan of the idea of having C be a subset of C++. I like the idea of them being one language. I don't see the point of having two languages with slightly different semantics. I think it makes headaches and it's a pain. And so if anyone out there who's actually actively working on this is listening, I would like to see the two communities come together rather than move further apart. And for what it's worth, I'm pretty sure that Bjarne Straustrup had that in mind when he started. Bjarne, please correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm putting words in your mouth that don't belong there. I'd love to have you on the channel. But the point is, is culturally that's not what happened. Now today I don't wanna to spend too much time burdening you with a lot of history about standards drift and how that happens. I think it's pretty clear how that happens. Different projects have different opinions and they kind of push things in different directions. The thing I'm interested in today is talking about the cultural drift and the animosity and what the fuss is all about. Because, I mean, this situation's kind of funny. It's like two sisters, an older and a younger, and the younger now doesn't want to be associated with the older because she never learned how to appropriately encapsulate data or something. It's kind of sad, but maybe we can understand it a little. At least I'm going to share you some of my thoughts and maybe they'll help. Because you see, over the years, it wasn't just the language that changed, it was the culture and the community, as well as the standard library, and today, in 2021, C++ has really split into two different things, in my opinion. On the one hand, we have this C++ language, the syntax, the compiler, the tools, and I'm going to call that big C++, big as in big tent. And on the other hand, we have the C++ culture, community recommendations, and standard library, and I will call that little C++. And to be clear, my big tent and little tent is really just a sense for how broad the definitions are. It's not meant to be pejorative in any way. But now why do I separate them? Well, if I look at this line of code, is it C or is it C++? Well, it doesn't matter. As long as we don't invite little C++ to the conversation, this code works fine in C and it works fine in C++. 
you get the same semantics and behavior in both languages, and both compilers will accept this code as valid. But while this code is perfectly fine in C and perfectly legal big C++ code, it is considered bad, awful, hazardous to your health little C++. I can tell you from experience that if you call this code C++ in a YouTube video, you will catch flack for it. You will get grumpy comments, and if you ask them why, you're likely to get something like <laughs> something about community standards and modern alternatives and yeah. Now specifically, what are we talking about? Well, little C++ doesn't like unions. They want you to use standard variant instead. Little C++ doesn't like passing pointer arguments. Use references. Character pointers? Nope, use the string class. And don't you dare include string.h. Come to think of it, little C++ doesn't even really like pointers anymore whenever it can avoid them. They're saying use smart pointers instead. And I could go on and on, but the point is that all these things are totally legal C++. They are part of the C++ language. They are accepted by the compiler and the tools, but they're just strongly discouraged by a large portion of the C++ community. And to be fair, there are a lot of good reasons behind a lot of these recommendations. Some have to do with type safety. Some are trying to help you avoid memory leaks and other errors. Some allow the compiler to do smart things for you, allowing your code to be more efficient or secure or more flexible. And then of course, some of them do just feel arbitrary, like someone just decided that it should just be this way. Now, personally, I think some of this comes from the challenges that people face when they try to teach C++ to absolute beginning programmers. To be fair, that's a pretty difficult job and it's one that I griped about in a previous video, but I can totally see them saying, ah, this is just a headache. Just, just use strings, stop using character pointers because maybe they don't want to teach both, or maybe by mixing one with the other, it's just confusing their students and scrambling their brains like eggs, and they're just tired of their students failing exams. Either way, what's happened and what's happening is that the C++ community has tried, and is still trying, to create a C++ world that looks like this, where the C core of the language is tucked away as much as possible with object-oriented abstractions often rather leaky ones, that they want programmers to use instead. And well, you might ask, if you don't like these things in here, why not remove them from the language? I mean, Java and Ruby don't have malloc, calloc, realloc, and free. They don't have pointers either, and they've been just fine. If it's so terrible, why not just drop the C stuff and move on? Well, good question, and the answer comes down to basically core philosophy. You see, C++ is based on a few core philosophical ideas that make this difficult. First, the goal of the language is to add object-oriented features, data encapsulation, namespaces, smart pointers, whatever, without, and this is important, without losing the ability to be blazing fast and lightweight and to get as low level as you like. The second, and a very related idea is that programmers should only have to pay for what they use or what they need. If they don't want to include all that extra code that is required for a standard variant, they shouldn't have to. They should be able to use unions. So this mindset really keeps C++ from eliminating any of these features. They're here to stay because if I want to get minimalistic, that's really what I go to. And the only thing the community can do is try to push people like me around with standards and best practices. And I want to be clear, there's nothing wrong with community standards and best practices, except that they are sometimes wrong. Sometimes they make sense, and sometimes they don't. I mean, if I'm working on a microcontroller with 10 kilobytes of code space and 2K of RAM, then I'm gonna trim everywhere I can. And that means that most of those fancy new modern object-oriented C++ features, I'm gonna leave them out. I might keep namespaces in because that's not really gonna change my code size or my memory size. And even a lot of the things you see in C, things like dynamic memory allocation, malloc, calloc, realloc, and free, I'm probably not gonna use those either. Because folks, as I may have mentioned, I have 2K of RAM. Now, another problematic and more common example is main. I mean, look at main. Every C++ program starts here, right? Well, just about all of them, but that's a different topic for a different day. And its argument list includes an array of C style strings, character pointers, right? But little C++ hates C style strings, right? Sorry, main, the beginning of all programs, you are now in contravention of the little C++ community standards and best practices. Now, how do you explain that to a new programmer without explaining to them C style strings? And what you get is you get a whole lot of hand waving and taking things on faith. And those are both things that you know I'm not a huge fan of. So little C++, I know you're watching. And as long as you're watching this channel, on this channel, the only rules that matter are these. What a programmer can do and what a programmer can't do. For example, you can accept that I'm going to occasionally use C style strings in my C++ code and I'm going to call it C++. 
or you can't. But character pointers are in your blood, mates, and totally legal in your language, so you're gonna have to square with that someday. Savvy? I hope this is helpful or at least entertaining to some of you. Please let me know down in the comments if you agree, disagree, or think I'm being unfair to the little C++ community. I fully expect to hear lots of defenses of community standards, and that's perfectly fine. Also, some of you older folks out there who may actually remember the tech world in the 70s or 80s, I was pretty young and clueless back then. Maybe you can clarify some of my historical inaccuracies, which I may very well have just propagated. And of course, if you're one of the few people out there that just this makes really, really mad, you might want to find a different channel because honestly, if I, I love you, but if we keep hanging out, I'm just going to bug you. On the other hand, subscribe if you don't want to miss my next videos and I'll see you next week.